Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video. We're doing the 8th Autumn 2019 Analogs update for today's first video. So I've uh, done seven Analogs updates so far for the Autumn as well as two Season 1 roundups. We are coming very, very close now to the end of the Autumn updates. We'll only have two more Analogs updates to do after this one. And one more seasonal model round. Other than that, see, it will be at the end of the updates. And uh, we'll release the autumn forecast on Saturday. It's going to be a different day for this one. Saturday, the 31st of August. The last day of August uh, will be the day when we release the autumn forecast. So, again, very close to the end. Um, but still with a couple more analogs updates to do after this one. And one more seasonal uh, model roundup and then of course when the auto forecast is released we'll go off into the winter updates the very next day um, Sunday the 1st of September that will be the day when we do the first winter 2019-2020 update I can tell you that we've already got analogs in the can for um, that first winter update so uh, we're already starting to uh, plan out our winter updates uh, for this year but getting ahead of myself, we've got this uh, autumn update to do. And then we've got updates uh, number 9, 10, and the final season one roundup as well before we release the autumn forecast. So I'll get on with that for you very shortly. Just to say, but coming up later on today, we'll have Gaz on this Sunday roundup. I'll be with you after lunch. And uh, this can be quite a long bit, so if you can't watch it all in one go, then don't worry, it will be, kept, will be kept on the autumn updates page uh, with a written summary going over everything that we discussed in the video. So you'll be able to come back and watch the video on demand. And also have a look at uh, have a look at the uh, written summary as well. And I'll get that up sometime this evening, usually around seven, eight o'clock, something like that. I got to say a big thank you to our analogs guru, James, James Aquil, for getting all of the analogs together. Big, big thank you to James uh, for doing that. Thanks so much. Uh, my friend James for um, getting the analogs together uh, together for uh, for this update and for the past uh, updates. Um, also, big thanks to Richard Trott for sending through the uh, Galswellis 2019 Autumn Updates GIF. Uh, Richard uh, designed that for us, so uh, a big, big thank you to James and for Richard uh, for doing that. It'll be quite a long video, so you can't watch it all and go, then um, don't worry, as I say, it will be kept on the uh, Autumn Updates page. You'll be able to watch that on demand. Get yourself a cup of chair, get yourself a cup of tea uh, and a couple of biscuits, and uh, we'll crack on with the 8th Autumn 2019 Analogs update. And we're going to start uh, for this update by looking at the Century and Territory. In fact, this update is going to be focusing on the CT. So we're looking at July's uh, CT for this update. So the July 2019 Central England temperature, there it is, came out at 17.5. Uh, there we are, that's the number just there, which was an, an anomaly of one and a half degrees above average. So what we're going to do, or nearly one and a half degrees above average. So what we're going to do for this update is look at uh, years that had July's with a similar CET uh, range. The range is actually 17.2 uh, to 17.9, although really it's 17.2 to 17.8 because there has never been, certainly back to 1850, which as far as we can go back with reanalysis, uh, back to 8.50, there has never been a July with a century temperature of 17.9. So although the range is from 17.2 to 17.9, actually really it's 17.2 to 17.8. Um, and uh, that places, of course, this July 2019 slap bang in the middle of that range. So that's our range of uh, July's. And of course, we're going to look at the autumns that follow those uh, July. So the first July we're looking at, uh, and first autumn we're looking at, is 1869. So July 1869 fits into our criteria of having a CET range of 17.2 to 17.9. Uh, and this is what the autumn looks like that follows uh, that July. Um, so uh, we find we've got an area of below average heights to our north and northeast, trough of low pressures in over Scandinavia and northern Europe, and a ridge of above average heights is out in the Atlantic, going up towards Greenland. And of course, that places us on the cool side of the jet, actually. So we're bringing some quite cool air uh, from the north. So despite having a very warm July, actually, the autumn of 1869 was pretty cool, pretty unsettled, and with some uh, probably with some early wintry potential. 
The next July with the CET range of 17.2, 17.9 is July uh, 1870. This is how the autumn of 1870 looks. Very, very unsettled, this one. Big area of below average height, slow pressure coming in from the Atlantic into the UK and Europe. A jet stream coming through the Atlantic into the UK like that. So it's just a very, very unsettled autumn. That would be really wet. Mild, the winds are in from the west, so there's some um, very little blocking within the normal latitude. There's no, no high latitude blocking, so basically it's just a bit of an Atlantic onslaught type autumn. Lots of wet and windy weather with that. We go through to our next autumn, which is uh, 1874. Again, following that all-important July CT range of 17.2 to 17.9, placing, again, July 2019 right in the middle of that CT range. Uh, so with this one, we find that we have below average heights digging in from the north, uh, above average heights out in the middle of the Atlantic, high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic, uh, another very unsettled autumn, seemingly probably not overly cold either. I think we're bringing in the wind from off the Atlantic uh, pretty much with that. Very little northern blocking to force cold air out from the northern latitudes. So again, just quite an unsettled, quite uh, a wet autumn there in 1874, but not particularly cold. The next autumn is 1876. So you see there's a lot of uh, Julys actually, and interestingly with a... Uh, with CTs um, in the 17th, which is a warm CT. You would have thought perhaps going back into the Victorian era, era that you wouldn't get many Julys that warm, but there's a lot of them uh, that we're going through at the moment. So the next July with a CT range of 17.2 to 17.9 is uh, July 1876. Um, the autumn of 1876 looks quite cold, this one. It's got a big, big area of high pressure blocking towards Greenland and Iceland. And then we've got low pressure in from off the Atlantic underneath it with the jet stream. So uh, this obviously going to be pulling in cold air from the north. We've got a subly track jet. Uh, definite wintry potential there. In the autumn of 1876, that could be really uh, quite a cold autumn. The next uh, autumn is 1887. Again, cold signal here with this autumn following a July CT range of 17.2 to 17.9. Below average heights from Scandinavia extending down into central and western parts of Europe. Blocking high pressure again to the south of Greenland and going up into the Arctic. Uh, we're pulling in cold air from the north or the northeast. Jet stream will be on a southerly track. So again, the autumn of 1877 looks pretty cold and looks like there would be uh, wintry potential in there. Another one, a final one from uh, the 1800s. So this one is 1899. The autumn of 1899 following July CT range of 17.2, 17.9. Looks like this. A more anticyclonic and milder autumn. This one, high pressure is ridging from the Atlantic into UK, many western parts of Europe. We've got below average heights up to the north. The jet stream is to our north as well. So just a fairly quiet and pretty mild autumn, that one, uh, in 1899. We only go through one year, then, to 1900. So this is how the autumn of 1900 is looking, following that uh, July CT of between 17.2, 17.9. This one with above average height sitting out to the west of us. And also over across eastern parts of Europe and below average heights up to the north. It looks like it should be a relatively mild uh, autumn there in 1900. Next autumn is 1905. This one looks very unsettled uh, with below average heights um, generally across much of northern Europe actually. So it extends all the way from Scandinavia down in towards Spain. It does have a bit of a blocking signal out of the Atlantic, but not much. So I don't think it's an overly cold autumn. Maybe some wintry potentially. I think November 1905 might have been quite cold. But otherwise, just a very, very unsettled autumn, I think, this one, in uh, 1905. 1923, also looking very unsettled. So you have quite a big gap there, interestingly. There's so many Julys with a CT range of 17.2 to 17.9. So many of them 
uh, in the 1800s. We get to 1900, we have one, and then we have a long gap to 1923. The autumn of 1923, looking very unsettled, deep trough of low pressure in Oton country. It won't be particularly cold. There's no northern blocky to force cold air out of the pole. So, um, essentially, we're just looking at a, a very unsettled and a pretty wet autumn, 1923. 1933 is the next autumn that we've got. So, this one has below average heights to our south and above average heights uh, up to the north. Um, bringing the winds from the east. I think this is quite a dry autumn in 1933, and it possibly does get quite cold at times uh, as well, following a hot summer. 1941 is the next autumn, following a July with a CT range of 17.2 17.9. This one is anticyclonic, has high pressure sitting up to the north of uh, the UK in the Norwegian Sea. So you can envisage a lot of easterly winds. Could be quite a chilly autumn, maybe with some early wintry potential, but um, also pretty dry. So a dry but coldish autumn, perhaps in 19. 19- well, that, of course, all part of the sequence of cold winters and northern blocking that we have from 1940 all the way to the winter of 1941-1942. There's three in a row cold winters, and it does impact that cold winter pattern with the blocking uh, does impact other seasons through that early 1940s period, uh, and 1941 is a good example of that. Then we go through to 1949. Uh, this is the autumn of 1949. Again, following a July CT range of 17.2 to 17.9. This one is a mild but quite unsettled autumn. It has above average heights to the east. Below average heights are uh, out to the west. Um, so it's unsettled, but we're, bringing, but we're bringing up southerly, southeasty winds. So it's a very mild autumn. 1949, but also quite unsettled, quite a wet uh, but warm autumn. 1955 uh, comes out next. So this one is a dry and quiet autumn. It has above average heights out to the north and the west of the country. Just generally high pressure, very close to the UK. So this is a pretty dry and a pretty uh, pretty warmish autumn, actually, in 1955. 1959 is also a dry and warm autumn with an anticyclonic signal. This time, the high pressure, the above average heights, sitting to the east and northeast of us, so bringing quite a lot of easterly winds, but generally they're fairly warm easterly winds, has a warm and dry September that goes on and on into October as well. It's not until the end of October that we finally break down the high pressure. That also delivers us a very extended summer. The summer 1959 is a really good summer. It starts in the spring. In, uh, in May, it goes on and on and on all the way to October. Finally, at the end of October, it gets broken down that ridge and we go into a rather more unsettled and wetter uh, November and December, but generally quite mild to end the year. But the autumn overall is a dry and mild autumn, very mild autumn, warm autumn even, in 1959. Pretty long gap again to 1975. So it's now the autumn of 1975 is looking again we're following that july ct range of 17.2 to 17.9 this one generally a dry autumn again so um it's part of the sequence of very dry years that begins at the end of 1974 and doesn't end until the autumn of 1976 so it's a long drought that uh, begins in set at the end of 1974 it goes on into the summer, or culminates, I suppose, for the summer of 76. And 1975 is a year that's right in the middle of that. So um, it's a very dry autumn in 1975, quite mild as well, generally bringing up the winds from the east or the southeast. It does have a wet September, interestingly. In, in all of this dry weather, there is a wet September following the hot summer of 1975. But otherwise, it's, uh, it's just a very, very dry year. From 1975, we had another long gap to 1991. So this is how July, uh, it's how the autumn of 1991 is looking following that July CT rain, 17.2, 17.9. This was a rather more unsettled autumn. So uh, it's quite a, quite a funny autumn, this one. It has below average heights overall extending through like the west of Europe. So you'd think it's an unsettled autumn, but it has a very dry 
um, a very dry September. Dry and warm in September, and then it gets more unsettled the further on we go. It's a mild autumn. Uh, generally bringing winds from west. There is a cold snap in October. A lot of those early 1990s Octobers were cold. 1991, 1992, 1993. They're all pretty chilly at times during October. But overall, this is a dry, this is a, this is a mild autumn. Starts dry, uh, becomes unsettled later on. Uh, the next autumn is 1999, so uh, the final autumn of the 20th century. Interesting that we've got autumns 1899, and then autumns 1999, 100 years on. Uh, this one, again, has below average heights to the north and to the west of us, uh, with above average heights to our east. Um, and so it's bringing up southern winds. It has a very, very warm September, September 1999 is the warmest since September 1949. Uh, also quite wet though through September of 1999. And then overall it does turn quite a, quite a bit drier actually through um, October and November of 1999. Not a particularly wet autumn, but it is a mild or very mild uh, autumn. 2001 comes up next. I think 2001 is an autumn that's been quite often. Uh, this year in the analogs update so maybe it's a fairly important play or it will be a fairly important play of this autumn when we come to uh, get the analogs together for the autumn forecast who knows can handle myself with that this one has above average heights to the west of the uk in the atlantic jet streams coming through rather like that again it's a rather strange autumn it's got quite a coolish september uh, and reasonably unsettled then october goes really warm warmest October on record, um, and then a few cold snaps coming along in November of 2001. So it's one of those seasons where there's lots of intramonth variation. Each month is, is different and unique. So there's no overall sort of pattern that defines this autumn other than it's, it's, uh, it's rather a changeable autumn. Getting okay, towards the end now, the next autumn is 2003, following the July CT range of 17.2 to 17.9. This one's an anticyclonic autumn, has lots of dry weather, lots of high pressure uh, dominating. It's just rather strange, just loads of high pressure dominating uh, through the mid-latitudes and even extending into the northern latitudes as well. So uh, it has a warm, dry September. Uh, October is also a dry month, but it turns quite a lot cooler in October. It's a pretty chilly month, that one, actually, with early frost. Uh, and then November is sort of a nondescript, very uh, very dull, sort of grey-type month. There's, uh, there's no particularly cold weather, I don't think, in September, in November 2003. Just a very grey, dreary uh, type month with some rain at times. And then the last autumn is uh, 2014. Uh, so this is the last autumn following that July seating range of 17.2 to 17.9. And very similar autumn pattern, this one, to 1999. So again, you see we've got that ridge of above average heights to the east. We've got the trough of below average heights to our west, uh, bringing up the wind from the south. So it's a very mild, it's a warm autumn, 2014. September is very mild, if not warm. Uh, October also, very a very mild month, very warm month. Um, and then November also, I think, generally uh, quite a, quite a mildish month too. So um, this could be the warmest autumn on record. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but at the back of my mind, I've got a feeling autumn 2014 is the warmest autumn on record. Could be wrong, might be um, might be 2013, but I don't think so. No, I don't think that's right. I think it's autumn 2014 that's the warmest on record, but someone will let me know in the comments if that's right or wrong. But anyway, it's a warm autumn, that one. I remember it had a very, very warm Halloween, uh, abnormally warm, which was quite bizarre, given sort of the long shadows due to the, uh, low, the low sun. Uh, so there we go. That's our uh, that's our analogs package. Now let's bring it all together. So bringing all of those um, years together, when we have a July CT range of seventeen point two to seventeen point nine, this is how the all September's combine. You're talking so grouping together all of the September's from those years. 
starting with 1869 and going all the way down to 2014. This is how it looks. It has above average heights on average uh, to the north and to the east of us, with below average heights tend to be down to our southwest. So they could be rather unsettled, these autumns, but these Septembers, I should say. But the main thing is probably about we're bringing up quite warm winds from the south. So the, it could be a warm signal for September, actually, when we have this uh, July CT range. But also it might be a little bit unsettled. Certainly not a cold signal, though. We could well be pulling up the winds from the south, really, uh, a lot of time with these Septembers. October is quite different. Um, so the all October's combined chart looks like that. And uh, looks quite unsettled. Below average heights through northern, central, western parts of Europe. High pressure tends to be focused up towards Greenland and Iceland with some above average heights. So it's still quite an unsettled signal, but it's quite a bit cooler. You can envisage on average, and there will be years deviating obviously with this, but on average, combining all of those Octobers, we could at times be pulling in some quite cold winds from the north or northeast. After a warm September, possibly go to something a bit colder, actually, when we get through to October. And then this is how the November's looking. It's just a very, very unsettled signal for the Novembers. It has a high pressure, above average height, sort of to the north and also to the east of us. And then this big trough of below average heights over to the south. You might think that that's a cold signal with high pressure seen to our north, but I don't think it's particularly cold, actually. I reckon a lot of the time we would again be bringing up wind from a southerly direction. So it's, it's sort of similar in some ways to a pattern in September, just that it's much more unsettled. So September, not, it could be unsettled, but generally the main thing about September is quite warm. This, I think, for November uh, is generally mild, but potentially very wet, especially uh, for more southern parts of the country, actually. And then bring all of that together. So this is how the autumns themselves are looking. Bear in mind, there is quite a bit of variability going on from month to month. Uh, so on average, we tend to get an area of above average heights in the North Atlantic, uh, possibly going up towards sort of Iceland, that sort of area and over towards Scandinavia and Western Russia. Uh, with below average heights tend to be through the UK and Western parts of Europe. But do keep in mind, I mean, there's a lot of variation to that month by month. I don't think these autumns actually are um, favouring cold conditions. I think that most of these autumns are favouring quite, quite warm outcomes, actually, but potentially quite unsettled uh, with these autumns. So uh, that's it for the 8th Autumn 2019 Analogues update. Uh, so I think what the takeaway from this is that overall when we have that July CT range of 17.2 to 17.9, but really 17.8, um, <laughs> we have that. Uh, generally, it's quite a mildest signal, I think, for the autumns, although possibly a bit colder for October, but I think a relatively warm signal for September, quite a mild signal for October. Reasonably dry, I would have thought, through the earlier part of the autumn with a lot of those years. And then November, perhaps unleashing a little bit, uh, a little bit of a deluge, more unsettled perhaps for the Novembers. I don't think, though, that these autumns are favouring particularly cold uh, outcomes. I mean, there are years, particularly the ones back in the 1800s, that do favour much colder conditions. But I think as a package overall, it's not a particularly cold analogue package for the autumn. Uh, but uh, there we go. So that's it. There's a lot of variation, though, within those um, months from September to October to November. And October does favour uh, things to get a little bit colder then. Right, so that's it for um, for uh, the July, the 8th um, Analogues update, focusing on July CT. Next week, we'll do the 9th autumn 2019 Analogues update. I think that's going to focus on July precipitation. So uh, we'll add that into the mix. And I'm not sure what we're doing for the final Analogues update the following week. Maybe we'll try and do something for August. But it's always very difficult 
Um, you know, it's always very difficult to do that before you get to the end of the month, got all the figures in. But if we can, that final update might focus on something for autumn. If we can pitch where we think the CT is likely to finish up, maybe we'll look at autumns with a similar uh, August CT range. Something like that anyway. But we'll keep you posted as we get to it. And then, of course, we have come to the end of the updates. And on Saturday, the 31st of August... We'll release the GavsWeathers.com Autumn 2019 forecast. Right, that's it for this video then. So um, I'm going to round it up now. And this video will be placed on the Autumn Updates and Forecast page with a written summary going over everything that we discuss in the video. You're ready to come back and watch the vid on demand and also have a read of that. And I'll get up for you uh, from around 7, 8 o'clock this evening. We'll be back later on with GavsWeathers Sunday Roundup. So come back for that then. But uh, that's all for now, and thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.